What's up guys? Today we're going to check out Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny in 4K UHD. I'm not here to talk about how good or bad the movie is, I'm just going to share some of my thoughts on the audio and video quality. Now let's go over a few tech specs. The movie was shot in 4.5K, it's got a 4K DI, it's rated PG-13, runtime is 154 minutes, aspect ratio is 239 to 1, and the audio is in Dolby Atmos. If you don't know what the Atmos viewer is, you can find a link down below in this video's description that tells you all about it, what it does, and where to get it. You can also find a list of all the gear that I use for these 4K reviews down there as well. As we can see, this is a static Atmos mix, so we don't have any objects bouncing around. And it's basically locked in a 7.4 configuration. If you've got wide channels or center surround like I do, they're not going to get used much, if any. With that said, let's hop over to the big chase scene at about an hour and three minutes in. Oddly enough, or maybe it should be expected, the height channels get absolutely no usage in this huge action scene. You'd think with all the traffic whizzing by and all the music playing in the background, there'd be at least some kind of musical extension up top or maybe some type of sound effect that finds its way up in the top speakers. But they're silent for this entire big budget shot. There's good movement in the lower channel, so you'll hear cars moving from front to back and vice versa, and the occasional gunshot that flies by, and the music does sound really good. The funny thing is, right after this huge car chase, there's a scene that happens inside of a helicopter which actually puts the height channels to good use. So you'll lightly hear the blade spinning above your head, which makes it sound like you're inside the chopper. Another missed opportunity comes in at an hour 23 minutes during the underwater scene. You'd think by being immersed in every direction by water, that they would try to recreate some sort of effect to bring you closer to what's happening on screen, but everything remains in the lower channels. There's no bubbles or anything floating away above your head. The lower channels still sound good when the eels start to come and attack, and the music, of course, it sounds great as well. This is pretty much how it is for all the big time action in this movie. Now even though this is mostly locked at 7.4, there is one scene that made use of all my available speakers, the wide channel and my center surround. When Indy and his goddaughter enters the cave and yells out, you can hear their voices echo throughout the cave and bounce around through all the available channels. This is the only time there's real aggressive Atmos usage during the whole entire movie. And it is a dynamic mix during this one particular part. That's some echo. As for the bass response, I did bump up my subs 5 dB louder than my calibrated settings since I knew this was coming from Disney. And even then, the bass was still weak. There's a couple of explosions and car crashes that sound good after I turned up the bass, but there really is nothing that's going to make you whip out this movie to show off your subwoofers to your friends. Dialogue, however, was always good and easy to hear. If you're new to the channel and you're into home theater or want to keep up with the latest and greatest in audio and video gear, tap the subscribe button for new weekly videos. This video is also brought to you from my YouTube and Patreon member subscribers. So thank you all for making this purchase of Indiana Jones 5 possible on the Kaleidoscape so I can bring you the home theater movie loving community this 4K review. If you want to join Patreon or the YouTube membership, you can find links down below in this video's description. As for the video quality, this is from the Kaleidoscape, so it should look either the same as the 4K disc or better depending on how large of a disc that they put this movie on. The Kaleidoscape file size comes in at 83.7 gigs, which means that the physical media version should be at least on a 100 gig disc to have the same quality, unless of course Disney chooses to go with a 66 gig disc. Now if you're not a fan of film grain, this movie does have a very light layer of grain added to it to make it look like film and to make it a bit more aesthetically cohesive to the other movies in the franchise, so it will not be digitally 4K crispy and clean. There's still lots of fine detail, so you'll still be able to see all the weathering and distress marks on Indy's leather jacket and even count all the stubble on his chin. Also, having added in the digital grain helps with blending all the CG in with the live action real elements. Most notably, them trying to make Harrison Ford look like he's 45. Shooting him in low light, dimmer surroundings and the softening from the grain did sort of work in some shots to where you might think it was believable, but for the most part, Indy did kind of look very cartoony. Watch a reproduction. CG stuff aside, it is a visually great looking movie. You might notice some shots have a vignette around the edges of your screen, so the corners can sometimes look dark and other times they can look blurry and soft. That's due to whatever lenses that were used to shoot this movie and not a defect of the transfer. The HDR looked great with a nice saturation throughout. It's a very warm looking movie with a lot of sepia tones and browns, so you won't get a lot of luscious vivid bright HDR colors. It's also not an eye scorcher for overall picture brightness. 
The Cloud Escape version doesn't include picture data, but if you're watching the digital stream, it's got a max CLL of 1522 and a max FALL of 161. Specular highlights sparkled really nicely, which you can see from all the sunlight and reflective surfaces when the scenes would take place in Tangier, although the whites did at times tend to look a bit hot, which is probably a stylistic choice. There's also some nice pop during the darker scenes with light bulbs and flashlights. The darker scenes were also free from any detail being crushed, so black levels were deep and rich and provided ample contrast. It's an overall great looking movie that doesn't look exactly like the original since it was shot digitally, so it still has some of that digitally clean glossiness to it, albeit softened from the film emulation and grain. And the HDR had some excellent brightness. The CG, however, is kinda suspect, so would have to go with an 8.8 .8 for video. For a movie with a $295 million budget and being Indy's farewell movie for Harrison Ford, I was expecting to be blown away by the audio mix. If it was only a 7 channel deal then sure it'd be fantastic except for the bass, but it is an Atmos mix and the Atmos height channels only came on for about half of the movie, and it was actually during the parts where there was no action. Again, the bass was weak and the immersion factor wasn't there when it should have been. I'd like to give it a 5, but the lower channel activity was great and the musical score had that nice grand Indiana Jones feel. So I'm gonna have to go with an 8.1. I should also mention that the Cloud Escape lossless Atmos mix was about 6 dB louder than the digital stream, so it should be equally as loud on the 4K disc. Well, those are my thoughts on Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny on 4K on the Kaleidoscape. Have you seen it and what'd you think of the transfer? Also, where would you rank this movie in the Indiana Jones franchise? Leave your comment down below and let me know. Now, if you want to pick up this movie, I'll leave some links for it down below in this video's description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. If you'd like, you can follow us on social media. And if you want to support the channel and get exclusive content or great discounts on audio and video gear, then stop by our Patreon page. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again in the next video.